I knew exactly why I was crying and it was definitely related to my breakup. I also was a little angry. I was feeling some injustice and um, I did notice and I did pat myself on the back a little bit for this. I felt sad um, not because I was missing anybody, but more because... I had this urge, I think, to share some of the experiences that I had had over that weekend, but I don't have someone with me who I can, like, unload all that on all the time, which sounds really unenjoyable, doesn't it, Um, to be unloaded on? (laughs) But anyway, I went from having someone that I talked to every day and, like, could talk about cereal with and blah, 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 um to not. And yeah, that makes me sad. It is a sad, it is a sad fact. It is also a happy fact in a lot of ways because I think my writing is only going to get better. I think I have an outlet with, with you. Now I get to unload on you. You're my new boyfriend. Isn't it great? Um, I was mostly just sad that I had been sharing that part of myself with someone who ultimately didn't want to be with me for so long. And that is sad. So I was like, yeah, it makes sense you're sad. It's okay to be sad. That is a sad thing. Let it out. Just like that part in Princess Diaries when the mom is like, you cry you cry. My mom always said not to cry, but you go ahead and cry. I live in a fire station. I'm a painter, apparently, and I make a living as a painter. Or I have a ton of money left over from my divorce to your father. I don't know. There needs to be a Princess Diaries prequel so I can know everything about the mom, apparently. So when did the sadness turn into depression? Well, I turned to some coping mechanisms, used some tools from my brain toolbox, like I put on one of my very favorite ASMR videos. I've been listening to it a lot lately. It is a woman just saying affirmations in a very soothing voice. And I usually hate affirmations. I usually find them so mm, grinding, cringy. I don't know. But for some reason, these just really are calming. And I feel really good when I watch the video. That's why I put it on. But um, I couldn't even concentrate on it. And I was like, okay, so that coping mechanism isn't working, which means I'm kind of starting to slip a little bit. So I, oh, I drank some water. I like got up out of bed and like moved around, uh, kind of just thinking like, okay, there's like this negative energy in me. Maybe I can just like walk it out a little bit. I don't know. I was also sobbing like loudly and I was kind of worried that I would wake someone up. For some reason, like, I don't think about my neighbors all day, but after, like, 10.30 p.m., I just assume every single person in this building has a newborn baby, and I'm responsible for waking it up with my sobbing, when, when honestly, it probably should be the other way around. The newborn baby should be worried about waking me up, but here we are. What else did I do? Oh, okay. I wrote it down. Um, I started scrolling on TikTok, which is a tricky, it's a tricky one because you don't know what you're going to get when you're scrolling on TikTok. What happened, what happened was I started scrolling on TikTok. I definitely got like little hits of serotonin, just like a little bit of like, (laughs) clever, ooh, 
But all of a sudden, it was one o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, I was super uncomfortable in my own body. And the biggest thing that I noticed was that I went from being in a state of sad, a state of sadness that I knew was about a very specific thing. It was um, temporary. I knew that it was temporary. I could see the end in sight. So it was sadness, but it was in my control. It was sadness, but I was going to be able to let it out. It was sadness and I was going to sit in it and then I was going to be able to get up. But when it got heavier, when I felt like I might not be able to actually get up, (laughs) literally, I just wanted to stay in bed. When I started thinking things like, you don't have to go to sleep because no one needs you tomorrow, so it doesn't matter. You could just stay up and and, and watch friggin' TikTok until you get one of those guys that come up and are like, hey, we noticed you've been scrolling a while. You okay there, buddy? Just scroll on past. Depression. I realized was this heaviness where I can't see the end. I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Even though, like, I have the knowledge that it's there and I have the proof because how many times have I been depressed and then I am not, right? I've gotten through it before. I... The rational part of me is like, you're going to be okay. But uh, depression is powerful. (laughs) And uh, all of a sudden it felt very out of control to me. So... Sorry, I just started feeling like like a ghost. I don't know how else to explain it. Anyway, when you can't see the end in sight of depression, I think at least I tend to look backward because I can see the light over there in the past and I want to be like, okay, like... How did I get in this freaking tunnel? Like, what caused this? Was it the convention? Was it all the people? Was it the phone call that I had on Tuesday morning about a project that I think is going to be really hard, but I really want to do, and I'm going to do it? Was it that? Was it looking at my bank account and feeling overwhelmed? Was it uh, just... (laughs) Was it just thinking my ex's name and being like, oh, wow. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) great. Was it, what was it? What did I do? Did I eat something weird? That's something that gets really stuck in my head. I'm like, was it the gluten? Should I give up gluten again? Should I be vegan again? Oh my God, I did. I ate a lot of cheese. I did. I ate a lot of cheese. That could be going straight to my brain. It could. Maybe I should try it again even though I saw absolutely no difference, except for that I missed cheese. Is it useful to look back and try to figure out what caused the slippage from sadness to depression? I don't know. It can definitely lead to um, overanalyzing and overthinking, though, which is what I did until... I just like woke up like I don't remember falling asleep like it wasn't like I drifted off or anything I think I just fell asleep obviously curled up in a very like uncomfortable position so that when I woke up I was aching all over which doesn't help when you want to just stay in bed all day it's almost like your body hurts so that you can just stay horizontal but I did it I got out of bed 99.9% because 
I am dog sitting and I didn't want the little baby doggy to feel neglected or feel like she was going to go pee pee in her little house that she has here. So thank you dog for getting me up, getting me out of bed. I had to put pants on. If you're going to go outside to be a butler to a small dog and pick up her poopies, you have to wear pants or at least some kind of covering. (laughs) I know from experience. 